How do you cure a sick Nepenthes? You could be a beginner or an expert. There is nothing more sad to see uh, a plant that you love slowly dying. So uh, today we'll talk about how to save them. Hi, my name is Remy and I love Nepenthes. I got my first Nepenthes when I was 16 and uh, I killed it. Then I got frustrated and I start searching, asking questions around in forums, uh, everywhere, uh, reading books, uh, internet, everything, uh, just to be able to understand why it was dying and why it died and uh, how to prevent it. And uh, the next uh, plants I got were a little bit better, but that's something you will fine tune over years. Uh, I'm happy to say that I didn't uh, lose a plant uh, the last 10 years. So uh, I have a few ways of uh, fixing the plants, but I want to rule out uh, the first thing. If you have a new plant, you just got it a month ago and it's uh, not doing great, forget about it. This is totally normal. The plant is adapting to your new condition. Uh, so um, nothing really to do except just being patient. And then you monitor uh, if it's growing better or not, but after three months, not three weeks. So uh, just be patient and that's it. Now, if it's a plant that you got for a few months, uh, even a few years, and then it's starting to be bad, to be unhappy, then that's a total different uh, case. Uh, for example, I got a few different tests that were sick this year, in 2022. I got uh, an, an hybrid, Sibirensis uh, by Amara, not happy. I had a pure Amara, not happy. I will only list the one that were not happy. Uh, Jacqueline, Tontaculara, and uh, I got Burbeche. Uh, so uh, all of them were not happy on the windowsill. So I had to investigate. And sometimes you will say, oh, but what did changed? because I got this plant for six months, a year, and suddenly it's going bad, unhappy, unhealthy, etc. So uh, what did happen? And you check what happened the last few weeks. It's, you are thinking the wrong way. Plants are very slow. So that's why sometimes the problem comes from three months ago, six months ago. Uh, for example, I got a plant, uh, this, um, Ventricosa, this one, I know if you can see it, uh, it was really bad. Uh, it was good at the beginning, it grew and then it had uh, some uh, spot, uh, it, it was an edema. So uh, too much water around the roots, I had to repot it to fix it. In fact, it was repotted in coco peat, so that was not a proper substrate or a proper mix for this very species. I reported that at least three months before it got uh, wrong. So it was just the accumulation of humidity around the roots that over time started this sickness. So it was not something fast like, oh, I uh, kept the windows uh, open and uh, a cold uh, wind blew uh, on it. No, it was just something slowly growing on it. So uh, in most uh, case scenario, I would say, monitor your condition, uh, you will have to uh, really take pictures, observe, like observation is the key. Uh, make sure everything is evolving in the right direction, uh, take notes and then ask questions. Try to investigate why it's starting to die. And for that, you could uh, use uh, some um, sensor. Uh, I have the sensor push that will monitor humidity, uh, temperature, day, night, etc. So I'm able to see a pattern, but sometimes it's something else. And because I constantly monitor all my uh, condition here, uh, if all the plants are doing great, but one or two are not doing great, I know this is not a condition problem, but something else. Uh, the plants don't like the condition, but nothing changed, because if something was changing here, everybody would uh, be unhappy. So that's also a good way to monitor if one plant or two are not happy, that's maybe something else. A lack of humidity, could be a lack of light, could be a lack of temperature, could be a wrong substrate, uh, too moist, too dry, could be a lot of stuff. So you will have to investigate further. 
So now I will show you uh, the plants that uh, I saved, uh, that, that were unhappy here in the windowsill and how, uh, what I did to recover them and how did they recover. So the sibilances by Amara, it was uh, all uh, rolling, the leaves were rolling, no picture, nothing. On the tentaculata, uh, it was kind of a burnt, uh, really reddish, brownish. Uh, the jacqueline was deformed. So all of them have different uh, symptoms. But first, let's talk about the ventricosa that was in Coco Pit. So again, edema. Uh, this is a reddish spot, dark spot that will be on the leaves everywhere. Uh, usually the plant won't be sure because it's unhappy. Then I reported that into sphagnum moss perlite, 50-50, so really well drained. And now look at that. It's picturing again, everything is super healthy. Uh, you see it's sticky, so the nectar glands uh, shows that it's happy. Uh, yeah, at least three pictures, and now it's starting to vine uh, really fast, actually, like crazy. Uh, soon it will be on the ceiling, and there is two basal shoots that are uh, on the ground. So again, quite uh, healthy for a recovering plant. And the leaves are just perfect. That's why usually I will try to report first in proper substrates to try to fix the problem. That's exactly what I tried on this uh, Burbage This Burbage uh, was picturing, but then, as you know, I got thrips. Then uh, everything uh, went south. Uh, clearly, everything was wrong. It was really red, like burnt. Uh, sticky, uh, deformed, so that was really, really bad. This one, I was almost sure I would uh, lose it. But in the center of the main stem, under this deformed thing, uh, we see uh, a new leaf growing, the light part here, so everything was not lost. So I had to do a a hard report, literally taking out all the substrates, uh, cleaning the dead roots. Really, it was an aggressive report. And you see here, it was in Coco Pit. It was not really, really in sphagnum. I used a little bit of uh, Coco Pit on it. This is when it's pure sphagnum only. I also removed this part to really, uh, if it's a germ, uh, a bacteria, whatever, uh, I tried to really take everything out and everything that uh, was uh, damaged. Then uh, hydrogen peroxide on the roots and uh, repotting. <laughs> I put it back on the windowsill and I waited a month and uh, nothing was uh, changing. Uh, it was not growing, not dying, but uh, clearly it was absolutely not healthy. So uh, plan B, uh, I had to take it out of the windowsill and bringing uh, that inside in a closed environment, really high humidity, gentle light to try to recover it. Usually if something is wrong, I will try to reduce the amount of light and boost the humidity. And I also had a low EI that was unhappy and it looks like a thrips attack, but uh, I had no thrips. And the tentaculata was also not happy, kind of a burn. So uh, a lot of different symptoms here. So I decided to take them on the basement when it's cooler, uh, less light, but uh, in a, under a lid. So way more humidity. And after five months, here is what uh, they look like. Let's start by the Burbage. It was really bad, but then look at that. The dead leaves uh, died and the new leaf is producing a picture. And it's uh, green, no longer reddish or deformed, uh, quite uh, healthy. So I uh, can't really complain about this one. Not picturing yet, but clearly recovering. This low EI that was also not picturing and deformed leaves after five months was better. Again, no picture. It's starting, but not there yet. But uh, the leaves are great. Uh, it's getting better. Clearly, it was a humidity problem. 
the tentaculata uh, also recovered properly. Uh, look at that, there is pictures now. Here is the biggest uh, picture of tentaculata and also the hybrid, uh, the Sibylensis by Amara, also started to picture again. But waiting just one more month, so six months after being under this uh, humidity dome, look at that. The tentaculata, uh, there is plenty of pictures. Uh, this is the, the first it did. It was properly formed, but still small. And look at this one, that's the last one. It's uh, two inch and a half. Uh, it's great, uh, properly formed, so really a fantastic improvement. And when we see the previous leaves, that we're unhappy, and the next one was already better. And the new one is totally green now. So uh, perfectly uh, happy, it needed more humidity. And that's the same for the Sibyolensis by Amara. This one is uh, picturing again. And there is a few picture. Uh, so um, not all leaves uh, pictured, but uh, all the new leaves always picture now. So that's uh, a great, cute little uh, picture. Toothy, uh, you can tell that there is uh, Amara in it. And look at the leaves. They are huge, not uh, rolling. And uh, if we go back in time, the previous leaves were not happy. Clearly, all the old leaves were not happy. Then it was improving a little bit until the leaves now. And really, uh, all it uh, needed was more humidity. Uh, I put a dome here for boosting the humidity. And I have a light above, uh, that's a, a grow light, okay, but it's still very high, so the intensity is not huge. So let's move to the next tray. On this one, we will see that the low EI is much better. It's finely picturing, look at that. Properly formed, it's still tiny, but uh, a great improvement. It didn't picture for a year. And there is another one coming on the side. Next is the BBJ. So that's the one that was almost uh, dead and deformed. But the new leaf is uh, great. A little bit too much light. But uh, the picture uh, is here finally and uh, it looks good. So now the Jacqueline A. So uh, those ones were not picturing uh, only once a year and now it's picturing so more humidity yet but it's still too much light look at the color of the leaf and even the big jacqueline a that didn't picture for a long time now if we look on the center you will see that there is a picture forming finally so uh more humidity less light especially for this tray uh, those two Jack uh, and uh, the Berbice Louis will have to go more far away from the light. But I mean, uh, this light is uh, covering, uh, I don't know, a meter, square meter, and uh, everything is uh, way more healthy than on the windowsill. So those ones won't work on my windowsill. I just got the best Christmas present ever. It comes from Patricia and uh, she basically uh, paid the Grow Tent project uh, by herself. Uh, a lot of you uh, helped also. Thank you very much for helping. But uh, she just paid directly uh, the price of the full project. And uh, so this way we will be able to have uh, interviews and uh, have all the videos to grow your Nepantes in a grow tent and to be able to compare the windowsill and the grow tent. What is working here? What is better there? It's going to be a great extension to this channel to be able to compare the two ways of uh, growing Nepantes. And uh, so for that, thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, that's huge and uh, I can't really uh, say how much uh, it means to me. So um, Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, until next time, happy growing.